I start my day at the Manchester, New Hampshire airport with a direct flight to Florida. It was too late to go to a theme park, so I went to the downtown Disney to walk around. After eating at my favorite restaurant, I went to the Disney Animation Gallery, and I saw a painting I really liked of uh, Mickey and the Gang and the Haunted Mansion, and I ended up meeting the artist and buying it and having him sign the picture. Disney's Animal Kingdom for a while to this morning. Disney really did an amazing job in the Avatar land of doing the scenery in the floating mountains. The Navi River Journey, the dark ride in a boat by Pirates of the Caribbean through the Navi Forest.
There used to be a demo every day. Someone would get in here and it would move and to demonstrate it. Doesn't look like they do that anymore. One of the machines from the movie Pandora. So we might not see all of those animals, but we'll do our best to see as many as we can. They're very good at camouflaging, which means blending in with their environment. Now on the left hand side, there are two different animals that I can see up here at the moment. There is a gray animal with white stripes, and that is the greater kudu. And then the reddish orange animal with white stripe is the bongo. Now the greater kudu are known for their amazing jumping abilities as they can jump up to about eight feet high, which is pretty impressive for an animal of their size. And then the bongos are known to be really shy animals, but they also can move through the forest very swiftly and quietly since their horns are pointed backwards, so they won't get caught on any bushes or branches and things like that. Now on the right hand side there is a large brown animal with black and white stripes on its legs, and that is the okapi. Now the okapi might look like it's related to the zebra, but does anyone know what it actually is related to? <laughs> Just shout it out. There you go. Yeah, so they have very similar skull structures, so their head shapes are basically the same. They also have a really long tongue as well. Now that tongue can get to be about 16 inches long. It's so long that they can lick their own eyeballs if they want to. Now up on the hill on this left hand side is a black rhino. Now black rhinos can get to be about two to three thousand pounds when they are fully grown. And a rhino's horn is believed to have medicinal purposes in some cultures, however it does not. And a rhino's horn is made up of the same thing that makes up our hair and fingernails, which is keratin. Well now coming up over here there is there are two black and white birds. These are saddle-billed storks. Now they get their name because of a little yellow saddle shape on top of their bill. They also can get to be about five feet tall and their wingspan can get to be about nine feet across. We're gonna go ahead and head out of the forest now and towards the Safi River. The Safi River is home to many different aquatic animals, which is animals that live in the water so just make sure you keep your eyes to the water and we will see what animals we can spot. So now coming up over here on the right hand side, I do see some large gray birds. These are pink backed pelicans. They get their name because of the pink color that appears between their wings during their nesting season. And they also are colonial nesters, which means that they will nest in groups of about 20 to 500 pairs at a time. Now hippos do have really sensitive skin, so they will typically spend most of their day in the water. And they can hold their breath for up to about five to eight minutes at a time. And there also is a little bit of pink on their skin that you might notice. That's actually an oil that they produce and it acts as a sunscreen for them to help protect their skin. Now, 
the year and they do store most of their water in their trunks. So a lot of animals out on the savanna heavily rely on these baobab trees as a source of moisture. And to get that moisture, they will normally strip the bark from those trees. They also have the nickname, the upside down tree since they do look like they're upside down for about nine months out of the year. Now coming up, I do see some large brown and white animals up ahead of us here with really big horns. Now those are Ancoli cattle. Now Ancoli cattle are some of the only domesticated animals out on the savanna. And they use their really big horns of theirs for thermoregulation. So their horns are mostly hollow inside, and then they will circulate blood through those horns, and that will help to cool themselves off. So we are moving pretty slowly through here at the moment. That there was an animal stop earlier. Ooh, now coming up on the left, I do see some African painted dogs. They're just before the bamboo over here to your far left hand side. Now, African painted dogs are some of the most successful hunters. They hunt in packs and have really good endurance. So basically they will just take turns chasing down their prey until their prey drops from exhaustion. Also coming up on the left hand side, there are some large brown animals with long horns. Those are sable antelope. They are the official emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve here and they use their really long horns of theirs to defend themselves against any predators. Now also on the left, there are a group of zebras. These are Hartman's Mountain Zebras. And Hartman's Mountain Zebras are very social animals, so they will typically travel in these groups. And a group of zebra is called a dazzle. Now also no two zebra stripes are the same. It's kind of like your fingerprint. And when a baby zebra like those two are first born, they will imprint on their mom and memorize her stripe patterns so that she can be picked out anywhere in a crowd. You also might notice there are some pretty tall dirt columns all around us here. Now, these are termite mounds. Termite mounds are made up of termite dung, termite saliva, and soil. It's all mixed together. It can get as hard as concrete in the sun. So a lot of animals out here on the savanna will use them as scratching posts. Ancoli cattle are used as a sign of wealth. Now you can tell there are a bunch of Ancoli cattle out here. I, however, have zero Ancoli cattle. Now also a little bit farther back, little bees can typically travel in herds of up to about 1.5 million at a time. Their migration is known to kick up so much dust that that dust can be seen from the outer space. And they also will typically all sleep in rows facing the same general direction. Just in case there's any danger nearby, they can get up and run together, causing a stampede. Now, at the top of this hill as well, there are some small tan and white animals laying down. There's one walking around as well. Now, those are springbok. Their name is very appropriate to them as they can spring really high in the air, about six feet high and 13 feet forward. left-hand side are some of my personal favorites, the giraffes. Now, giraffes are the tallest animals in the world. They can get to be about 18 to 20 feet tall. <coughs> when a baby giraffe is first born, it's already born at about six feet tall. Giraffes do go first standing up, so the very first thing that a baby giraffe will experience in life is gravity. On the right-hand side, in just a second. Now, elephants do have really sensitive skin, so they'll typically just toss dirt or mud up on their backs to help protect their skin. 
They also will use their ears sometimes. They can use it as a big fan. Or they also have blood vessels in the backs of their ears, which they will circulate that blood, and that will help to cool themselves off as well. Sometimes we call that ear conditioning. I'm here all day. Uh, it does look like this road is closed here, but I do know a detour, friend, so we're going to go ahead and take that detour, and here is the best sign of the elephant for you here. <laughs> now, elephants do typically travel in herds, however, their herds are mostly made up of females. Okay, we made it. No need to worry, you have the best safari driver out there. Oh, thank you for the applause. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, it does also look like we're coming into some red clay pits. Now that could be another good sign of elephants as elephants like to eat this red clay and it serves as vitamins and nutrients that they may need. If you look on the right hand side, I do see some tusk marks in the clay. Looks like an elephant was nearby eating it. Oh, and I do see some on the left hand side over here. Unfortunately, elephants are really endangered animals due to lots of different reasons. And one of these is from habitat loss. Unfortunately, they are losing their habitats due to Colton mining. And Colton is found in cell phones and some other electronics as well. However, it is a recyclable material. So just be sure to recycle those old cell phones and electronics when you are finished using them. And that will help to reduce their habitat loss and save these amazing animals. Now another reason that they are endangered is from poaching. Unfortunately, they are poached for their tusks most of the time because it is ivory. But another reason they were getting poached was because they kept getting into farmers' crops in Africa. However, the farmers eventually reached out to Disney for help and Disney came up with the idea of making beehive fences. This is because elephants are quite afraid of bees. It's a good situation. Now also coming up over here on the left hand side, there are a group of flamingos. Now these are greater flamingos and they're the lightest shade of flamingos there are. Coming up on the left, I do see a group of white rhinos over here. And then over time it was just misheard and mistranslated into white rhinos and the name just kind of stuck. A group of white rhinos like this one is called a crash. One of my favorite things to know about animals is what a group of them is called, so you'll probably hear me say it, I'll say all the animals' group names. Now also over here there is a mud wallow as well. Now rhinos like to roll around in these mud wallows on hot days to help rock here. Now cheetahs are super cool animals. They can run really fast, speeds of up to about 60 miles an hour. That is six zero. My truck can only go eight miles an hour copy rocks and it helps them to see their prey better. So we'll make our loop around here, see if we can see any predators out. Are there they are. There is one, oh, two of them on that front rock right there. Uh, lions do rest for about 20 hours a day, which is almost as much rest as I need. And they do their hunting at night, so the females will do the hunting and the males will stay back and take care of the rest of the pride. Now, warthogs do live in burrows, however they will typically borrow burrows from other animals and then sleep in them with their tusks facing out to help protect themselves from any predators. Now they also use those burrows to help them regulate the temperature. So if it's too hot outside or too cold outside, they will stay in those burrows and stay nice and cozy and the right temperature for them. Now coming up in the grasses over here on the right hand side, there are some ostriches. Ostrich eggs can get to be up to about three to four pounds. They are super durable. So durable, in fact, that most humans can stand on an ostrich egg and it will not break.
Alrighty, my friends. Well, we are coming into the final part of the reserve. This is Magadi Glen. It is home to the warden's post. And the warden does take care of all of the animals out on the reserve. Including some of these cuties that are on the left-hand side. The Nigerian dwarf goats. Although they are small, these Nigerian dwarf goats are fully grown. And Nigerian dwarf goats are dairy goats, which means that they produce milk. And so a lot of farmers will sell this milk, and it helps to take reliance off of the local wildlife. Bringing your own back to the grocery store, or buying a reusable water bottle to help cut back on the plastic. Unfortunately, a lot of this plastic does end up in these animals' homes, and their environment could be super harmful to them. However, by making this small hat, zebras, naked mole rats, it is hot. Florida, but I think the uh, animal kingdom is hotter. I just always have seen that way. So, relaxing for a bottle of water and a Mickey bar. I am a diabetic. I have to have some sugar every now and then. Otherwise, it gets too low. And on uh, theme park adventures like this, it's very possible it gets too low. It did last year one time. So I got to make sure I have a snack every now and then. And uh, so I don't die. And that would be a good thing. I saw this in a random wall in the Africa area of a store. I've seen many different versions of the Festival of Lion King over the years, from a parade to another type of show. It's a good show, so I went one more time. And now, I present to you, His Majesty, the Lion King. Welcome everyone, it's me, Simba. You've all picked a very special day to visit. You see, today, we've come to town for a big celebration, and you, my friends, are invited to join in the fun.
Disney Animal Kingdom is always one of my least favorite Disney parks, mostly because I've grown up going to zoos like San Diego and the San Diego Wild Animal Park and a lot of other great zoos. So uh, I've had a lot of animal experience at zoos. And this place is very hot, but it's a decent place to go every now and then. I haven't been here the last few times that I've uh, come to Florida. And I thought it was enjoyable to spend a few hours here today. So goodbye, Animal Kingdom.